Alexis Martinez Johnson, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Um, after redistricting, uh, CD3 now pushes far down into the eastern part of the state, it's picking up pieces of Hobbs and Artesia, Roswell, where you're from. What, do, looking at this district as a whole, what do residents in Roswell have in common with people in Santa Fe where you live now? Well, thank you, thank you again for having me. And the, what we have in common is a love of New Mexico, a love of our families, you know, hard work. We always like green chili, of course, but you know, we want a good economy. We want to prosper. We want to live in a state where there's not that much crime, things of the, that nature. And going from Hobbs, going to Roswell and up to the north, we hold those values to be the same. Scientists tell us that, the, that fires are getting more erratic and stronger in part because of climate change. Do you see climate change as an urgent problem here in New Mexico? I, is that a problem for you? The urgent problem I see that's needed is proper policy and management of those forests. So for instance, a couple years ago, if you recall, we were not able to cut down trees in Las Vegas, in Mora. So what do we have now? Those were put in place so that we'd have habitat for the spotted owl, and that's good. As an environmental engineer, you know, I'd be supportive of proper habitat, but there's a way to do it, and that's not being seen. And as an environmental engineer, I would have worked collaboratively with our federal, state, uh, tribal, and local governments to make sure that we are all on board to not let this happen again. You know, this has happened before let in Los get, Alamos. Let me take you back to climate change, though. What do you think we should do to address climate change? I think what we should do is, for someone like myself, an environmental engineer who I've spent my entire career making sure our water, soil, and air is clean, you need to have people that actually have the know-how. You do not want government officials and extreme left party, policy, party politics in play because then what we do is we get a situation where like in New Mexico, we're gonna be subject to brownouts because they're going to take out one of our coal generating stations in my district and for what? So that we don't have electricity? I mean, we have to do this in a way where it makes common sense. And that's why I'm running, to bring common sense solutions to New Mexico and to really provide expertise in that area. You recently tweeted about another big problem in New Mexico, fentanyl, saying it's time to secure our borders. Now, government data shows that more than 90% of the fentanyl seized at our borders is taken from U.S. citizens at legal border crossings. Are there other ways that you think we can fight back against this drug problem? Well, we definitely need to have a more secure border. And what I mean by that is what's going on right now, what the vice president has said that the border is secure, that's a lie. So we have an administration that is not displaying any type of compassion and you're letting cartels run this border. We had the largest FBI bust here in New Mexico of fentanyl. You send your children to college, and there is, someone offers them an Adderall, someone offers them a Percocet, and it's laced with fentanyl, and they die. And so this is not really getting a good look. The precursors are coming from China. You know, they're being um, taken into the United States, and the border is not being taken seriously. We need a bipartisan solution, and I'm the type of individual that is looking for that. I was raised by an immigrant from Mexico, and he was not kin to me, but he raised me and showed me what the American way is as far as hard work and determination, and I want to make sure that everybody has opportunity in the United States. According to the FBI, the majority of violent crime in New Mexico is committed by young men in their 20s, not on the street, but in the home. And we've long known that domestic violence victims are much more likely to be murdered by their family members if they have guns. Are there any types of gun restrictions that you think could help reduce um, violence against New Mexicans? Well, I think we need to assess those root causes. You know, you mentioned the young men and things of this nature. We need to get to people that are slipping through the cracks. And I would like to have a better economy here in New Mexico where there are jobs. I'd like to make sure that our children are funded fully so that if they are not getting the proper resources at home, that we can come to the table as a community and make sure that these kids come out ahead. You know, I was raised in one of those homes, in a, in a home where my parents did not care for me in the sense of taking care daily for me. My grandparents took care of me. 
I was raised in a family that was in poverty. And how did someone like me growing up on the south side of Roswell come to achieve the situation now where I am seeking to represent the District 3? And that all comes down to people stepping up to the plate. And New Mexicans, we take care of our own. And so I'd like us to get back to that, but I think that we need to make sure that current gun um, measures are uh, in place that we already have. We already have situations where we're doing background checks. You know, what I want, really want to see is in schools. We need to make sure that the social media and all of those alerts that are being put out of someone in trouble are taken seriously and that we sit down as parents and as educators and say, if you hear something, if you know of someone in the schools or anyone else that is going to commit a crime, please let us know. So I think education is key and I think that the current measures we have are, are good. Um, I am a hunter, my husband is a hunter, you know, I also have my firearm for self-defense, and I think that for law-abiding citizens, we, put, we shouldn't make it more difficult for law-abiding citizens. It, you know, advocates for the homeless say that a lack of affordable housing is a major contributor to people living on the street. What do you think we need to do what could you do in Congress to help alleviate the homelessness crisis in New Mexico? A lot of that stems from, again, these root causes. You know, you're talking about fentanyl. You're talking about substance abuse. In New Mexico, we have a huge issue with uh, chemical dependence. And so I think that treatment centers are very much needed. It hasn't been taken seriously. Only during an election time do people discuss it or take it seriously. And I think that to really turn New Mexico around, we really need to make sure that we seek our professionals out in mental health and also the chemical dependency. You know, these individuals are um, dependent upon a drug and they need medical assistance. So I'd say probably half of it would be medical assistance and the other half, half would be mental uh, assistance in regard to um, any kind of disorders or anything of that nature or trauma. And so funding for that, I would really like to see that, especially for our veterans that have a lot of issues um, coming back from some war-torn areas. And back to your homeless, you know, there are some people that they will not go into affordable housing even if that is provided. And, and for those people, this is what I'm talking about. But quite frankly, we have to tie it in with some type of program where you are working for your keep in a sense. Of course, we all know that we need to come to the table and work together for you know, our Medicare and Medicaid, our children and our elderly and our veterans. So for them, of course, as a community, we'll step up to the table. In Congress, I will do that. I would like to make sure our health care is um, where it needs to be, you know, funding pre-existing conditions. I want to ask you about health care. Yeah. You know, we've only got about three minutes left. New Mexico has relatively few restrictions on abortion, mm -hmm. on, in stark contrast to some of our neighbors. In Congress now, there's a proposal to ban abortion nationwide at 15 weeks. Would you vote for that? Well, quite simply, it has been relegated to the states. And I think we should start representing New Mexicans. What do New Mexicans want? That should be the first thing that you're asking as a person for U.S. Congress or any type of leader here in New Mexico. And quite frankly, when you're talking about ending the life all the way up to the point of 39 weeks, that's barbaric. I mean, you're talking Democrats, Republicans, and independents overwhelmingly do not support up to birth, elective, and they do not support all the way taxpayer funded, which but the leaders in this New state Mex are polls, doing. Polls do show us that the majority of New Mexicans support access to abortion. So if you were elected and this came in front of you, would you vote for or against a nationwide ban at 15 weeks? I would vote for what New Mexicans want and what New Mexicans want is they want to be able to have their reproductive care taken to the personal level and with their doctor. So quite frankly, very simply, I support New Mexicans. I support them having a voice and a choice. And at that 15 week, I think that is a, a point where they can make that decision to carry on or do not. And so I support what New Mexicans want. New Mexicans don't want what's currently going on right now, which is up to the point of birth. And you're talking no emergency. You're talking to someone that has had twins born at 32 weeks, who's fought for their life for more than a month and a half at 32 weeks. Right now today, you can call Southwest Women's Options. You can say, I have no emergency. The baby has no emergency. Can I walk in and end the life at 37 weeks? And they'll say, come on in. That's not what New Mexicans want. 
Uh, last question, we only have a minute. <laughs> the nation has become more and more polarized over the years, but we like to think of ourselves as New Mexicans as being more reasonable. Uh, how would you develop working relationships with Democrats in Congress? I already have. Actually, when we're talking about the forest fires that have been going on right now, people know that they can call me, and I'm not even a politician. I'm a wannabe politician, right? So I've had Democrats call me. They didn't vote for me, but guess what? Why would they call me? Because they knew that I would do the right thing. And quite frankly, we need a check and balance on representation. And I would be that check and balance to any president that we have now or in the future. And we need to stand up for New Mexico. So I've worked with Democrats, Democrats in Santa Fe, all the way to Roswell, know that I represent New Mexican families. And I don't ask any child, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Before I help them. And I think today, when we see the governor come out and say, those Republican attackers, you're talking about families. You're talking about my child sitting over there. We are those Republican families, and we want solutions. We don't want talk, and we don't want party fights. We want solutions for New Mexico, for better jobs, for an economy, for a safe environment, and to educate our children.